Hello everyone and welcome back to a brand new episode of NASCAR Heat 3 Career Mode. Today we will be racing in Bristol, obviously, for the Xfinity Series with Haley Diggin and myself in the Cup Series, a track that I won at in my rookie season in the Xfinity Series. Hopefully Haley Deegan could do the same thing now as she actually had a very good qualifying effort. She started on the pole, her first Xfinity Series pole, and now since she started this season, as she came through turns one and two, side by side with the one of Elliot Sadler down the back straightaway, and she had a really fast car for sure, and by the time it came in through turns three and four, she would clear the one of Sadler, and the seven of Allgaier came up behind, or beside Sadler, as she got really loose out of turn four, and allowed these cars to close right up on her, but she did not let that phase her, as she just continued to drive away in this race as she came to about the midway point you see the gap she has over second and third place as uh, Christopher Bell and Daniel Hemrick battled side by side as she came across the line she would continue to drive away in this race and Ryan Priest would end up working his way up to the second position and he would close the gap a little bit on Haley Deegan, but it didn't really matter too much as she came to the white flag, certainly with a little bit of damage on the car at this point. She slides into turn one through turns two on the exit of the corner, down the back straightaway. She is yet to win in the Xfinity Series. She had a couple wins in her rookie season in the Truck Series last season, and she will come out of turn four, and Haley Deegan will win her first Xfinity Series race in Bristol. So certainly a great job by Haley, and finally our team gets their first or our first Xfinity Series win. Hopefully we can transfer this over to my cup performance uh, coming up next. Maybe we can pull up a victory to get our first win of the season and get our third career win as well. But Haley Diggin is now a first time winner in the Xfinity Series and she's actually going to be in the cup series lineup in the 2019 DLC and we obviously will be going to that next season so that's actually going to work out perfectly with this YouTube series. So we'll see how that goes. I can't really say too much right now but uh, there you got a lot of drivers happy with her and like I said hopefully we can continue this performance over to the cup side for myself as uh, we struggled last season or last time we were here the, this time last season in the first Bristol race we were running third um, in overtime and got taken out by Clint Boyer and Eric Jones who collided for the lead and then the second race um, just before the playoffs started, it was a complete disaster. So we're looking to turn it around this time around. Hopefully we can maybe pull something off, run top 10, and that's really the main goal now. And we did make it to the final session in qualifying. We set a 16.9, and I decided that's not enough to get the pole. So we come through out of turns two. I know we have the speed to get the pole. I don't know if we have the speed to run on the or up in the front really two one two three for the rest of this race but we come out of turn four crossing the line we set a 16.830 and i called it there and we qualified on pole to get our first pole of the season here in bristol hello everyone and welcome to bristol motor speedway in bristol tennessee for the running of the food city 500. this half mile concrete oval is famous for its high banking stadium-like seating and all the beating and banging that goes on between the competitors. In fact, sometimes there are more fireworks during this race than on the 4th of July. But there's no room for hurt feelings or bruised egos today. All that matters to these drivers is winning this race. This is Bristol Motor Speedway, and this is NASCAR Racing on PRN. All right, we are ready to get going here in Bristol. I will start on the pole alongside the 14 of Clint Boyer. Denny Hamlin didn't have a good practice session, so they know they can do better. They're not starting very well. Trevor Bain sent to the back after failing optical scanning station multiple times. And Kyle Busch, a, really a master of this track, failed technical inspection, so he will be starting in the back. So we know that he's not really going to be a factor for at least stage one. Maybe stage two he'll be able to get up there. But we are ready to go green, and the green flag is out. We are underway in Bristol from the pole alongside the 14 of Clint Boyer as we cross the to start this race heading into turns one and two for the first time here in Bristol running that bottom line as we come out of turn two a little bit sideways as on the short run this car was actually pretty loose and hopefully it tightens up on the long run as we come out of turn four though we will be ahead to lead lap one of this race I believe honestly that might be our first laps led this season now as Truex moves up to P2 behind me as we get really sideways on the exit of turn two hanging on to the position Outside. though as we come into turns Clear three sliding up in front of the 78 as we come out of turn four now clearing them with no problems at all as we come across the line to complete the second lap we do lead that lap as well with 28 laps to go now in stage one 
on his Truex, briefly looks from my inside, but he's not able to get there now as we head back into turns three and four. Obviously a very short track, the laps fly by very fast. 30 laps in stage one is basically nothing now as we come through to uh, start the fourth lap of this race, starting to put a little bit of a gap between myself and Truex. Now as we come out of turn two, down the back straight away, and by the time we got to lap six, you can see I stretched out the gap just a little bit more over second place of Martin Truex Jr. as we come into turn four, crossing the line to continue to lead this race now as he just lurks behind me. Him, he's pulled away from third place quite a bit as well, so it looks like myself and Truex are really the class of the field at this time right now in stage one as we exit turn four. And by the time we got to the midway point in stage one, still above the same gap between myself and Truex as he's pulled even further away though from third place as it's about a half a second gap between myself and second place now as we are starting to close in on lap traffic at this point now as we cross the line we hit 15 laps to go in stage one and like I said the car certainly tightened up the further we went in through the stage now as we come into turn three closing up on Harrison Rhodes to put him a lap down, actually getting into his left rear just a little bit, but we come out of turn four, clearing him with no problems at all. And by the time we come to lap 18, clearing Hemrick, a little bit of a rough time getting past him, and that allows the 78 of Truex to join the party as he looks to my inside, but he's not able to make a move as we come through turns three and four. Truex all over my back bumper, trying to pass me now as we head into turns one. Truex is going to look to my inside as we come down, just trying to hold him off, and we get stuck behind Ross Chastain, who's in the way, and that allows Truex to clear me on the exit to turn two down the back straight away and we dive to his inside into turn Still three there. making it three wide now clearing the 78 as we exit turn four alongside the 62 of brendan gone as we cross the line into turn one true exits me in the left rear we both go sideways through the center of the corner we hang on to it somehow both cars hang on to it after going sideways as truex hit me in the left rear going into the corner and that actually damaged the back bumper and if you damage the back bumper in this game and it goes yellow it really screws up the handling as you're going to see as we come to four to go we get really loose through turns one and two completely giving up the lead as i had to really get out of the throttle to hang onto the car and that allows martin truex jr to retake Careful, the lead as i there. completely blew it as we just lost the back end and Looking now clint boyer is going to force a three wide with myself and busher and i had no idea so i stayed up there and ended up getting pushed wide and losing the second position too now as we come down the back straightaway heading into turns three we're gonna get into the back of Clint Boyer not intentionally but now he gets really sideways as he hangs onto the car fortunately but we do regain the position not the way I wanted to regain the position is that was not what I intended to do at all I didn't even want to touch him now as we come out of turn two he's already run me back down coming to the white flag but the white flag will not come out as stage one will finish early due to a yellow for I'm not sure what it was as I could not find it in the replay but Martin Truex Jr. wins the stage after we completely gave it away and choked away really the last handful of laps of this stage. And pit stops were not made at the end of stage one, which really is a bad thing green. for me because I know we're going to suffer at the ready? end of stage two as we get ready to go green. The green flag is back up. Stage two is underway as we start alongside the 78 going into turns one. I immediately look to the bottom and get hit in the left rear by the 14 of Clint Boyer. I guess we kind of deserved that, but he certainly had different ideas of me getting to that bottom line. Now as we head into turn three, we do clear him though as we come through the center of the corner. Truex leads the first lap as we come out of turn four with just 28 laps to go in stage two. This stage a couple laps shorter obviously uh, than stage one now as we come out of turn two. Down the back straightaway, Boyer has closed up on my back bumper. You see the right front tire is at 64% now, right? so certainly not what we really need in this race as stage two we're just trying to maintain a top 10 because we always kind of struggle in stage two when we don't pit at the end of stage one it's unfortunate that it is that way but yeah we're gonna just basically try to tough it out to the end of the second stage as we actually early on close in on the back of martin Truex jr with 26 to go in the stage eric jones passed clint boyer to move up to the third position this race last season eric jones was in contention to win until he completely blew it but he did take the lead in this race as you can see by the midway point i'm it's starting bad. to fall backwards as i've hit the wall a few times as we go into three side by side with the four we make contact and into the wall i go and we drop down to p4 adding to the damage of this car and you see right there the right front's at 48 percent and it, we're just nursing the car around at this point sliding around and at the same time i'm also having really tight issues 
with this right front being worn so much as Eric Jones. Like I said, he passed myself and Truex to take the lead. And at this point, he's driving away from the field. And like I said, at this point, I'm just trying to nurse it home now as we come to 11 to go in stage two behind Brendan Gaughan in the 62 car as we come out of turn two. Kevin Harvick was able to also pass Martin Truex Jr. for second place. So obviously, Truex and myself have both really fallen off the pace compared to our stage one pace now as it looks like the 20 and the four will take command now as we come to lap 26 i fell back to p7 just trying to hang on with keselowski or sorry joey logano and kyle bush now battling with me logano on my inside as he looks through trying to pass me oh my goodness there is a car up on the outside wall and Corey lajoy has been taken out as he was just sitting in the wrong direction and no caution would come out now as we come out of turn four to hit two laps to go in this race or in uh, stage two, I should say, now as we head through turns one and two. The 21 of Paul Menard looks to my inside, but out of turn two, we do keep clear of him as we head into turns three and four, coming to the white flag in stage two. This time by as we clear Ross Chastain, who kind of really screwed up our stage one chances now as we head into turns one and two. Menard clears me, and we fall back to P9. And on the exit of turn two, Almarola will look to my inside as we tag the wall now as we head into turns three. Now getting a little sideways and hitting the wall again, running into the side of Kerr Bushes. He's going to get a little sideways into the wall. He goes as we come up turn four, slowing up not to hit him, and we will finish stage two in P11 as we just had a horrible last half of a second stage, which was... Like I said at the beginning of this race, expected as Kevin Harvick ended up winning the stage. Eric Jones somehow dropped back to six as we would and take four tires and we would lose one position to restart now in the 12th position. Casey Kane green. on my inside. I think Clint Boyer actually ready. got the lead as the green flag is out. We are underway. The final stage is going here now as Kevin Harvick, who won stage two, actually starts behind me as certainly some drivers Stay must have taken two tires as Careful. we run over a pylon going in through uh, turns one and two. Now making contact with the 95 of Casey Kane. Now as we head into turns three and four, trying to work our way into the top 10 early on. Now as we exit turn four, sideways down the track onto the apron, but we hang on to the cars to complete the first lap in stage uh, three. So now certainly losing positions as we come out of turn two, not in the greatest situation as the car just does not drive as good as it did early in this race in that first stage and it's certainly looking like it's going to be a challenge to work our way forwards now unfortunately as we have 59 laps to go in this race as we try to work our way forward now behind the four and the 78 of Truex and Harvick who battle side by side we come into turn three uh, looking to the inside of the 78 of Truex as we will clear him on the exit of turn four as he does get the run back but it doesn't really matter now as we look to the inside now to the of the four in the 88 of Bowman but Harvick's able to keep clear of me but we do come into turn two side by side with the 88 as we head into turn three now looking to the inside of the four and the 47 of Harvick and Dinger as we exit turn four working our way up to P11 at this point in the race so we certainly still showing a very little amount of speed and hopefully we can continue and we look to the outside of Casey Kane going into turn three trying to fall back in line behind him. we get into the back of him now getting sideways as we come out of turn four and we would start to fall down the order unfortunately in this race by the time we got to lap 90 you see I fell back to the 18th position looking to the inside of the 21 oh, of Menard and outside. Jimmy Johnson as we come out of turn four Menard's gonna hit the nine of Elliott and around he goes into the right side of me as we come across the line into turns one and two the caution would come out now as we ran P15 as we just were struggling so hard I fell down the order so much as you can see and we're not the only ones Harvick and Truex they've struggled to move their way forwards as well so I wasn't the uh, only one struggling that's run good early Coming in this and on this restart we're only going to have just over 30 laps to go restarting from P15 obviously this race has been not so good for me in the last half and we're just trying to rebound now as we have 31 to go trying to at least get maybe a top 15 as we're already running into some trouble making contact with the fours I was just really being too aggressive trying to make up for the ground that I've lost early in this race as we come through to pass the 78 and maybe the 19 of Suarez to come across the line going into turns one Truex hits me in the left rear and pushes me up into Suarez and puts him in the wall as we get sideways from that incident now to the inside touching the inside wall and our race goes from bad to worse now as we do collect very minor damage as I'm just getting really frustrated at this point in the race now as we come across the line to sit P20 trying to pass Careful, Austin Dillon to P19 but Truex that's not the first time myself in the 78 have made contact he hit me in the left rear earlier uh, going into the same corner and he did it again this time 
Suarez was unfortunately on the receiving end of Still that there. incident now as we come across the line. 28 to go, passing Minari for 18th, and I really didn't feel like our race was over. I still felt like we could maybe rally back to get a top 10 out of it. And now as we come to lap 101, still battling the sitting P18, looking to the inside of DJ Kennington as we get a caution. And we're going to be restarting with just about 20 laps to go as Joey Logano currently leads this race. Ready. And we get ready to go green starting Amber alongside the fellow Canadian of DJ Kennington. We immediately clear him as we come across the line. So I get into the inside line after I cross the line as we go into turns one. Look into the inside of Chase Elliott as we come through turns one and two. Obviously, I have no problem messing him over so we can just shove him out of the way now as we go into turns three and four. Up to P15 as Logano leads over second place. Barry Gamarola as the 48 of Jimmy Johnson gets into the wall with 20 laps to go as we cross the line. Our teammate Kyle Larson, he's been having a bit of a rough race as well as he is looking on the outside of the top 10 as we go into turn three now looking to the inside of our teammate Kyle Larson making it three wide with him and Kane as we come out of turn four Casey Kane backs out of it and now as we go into turns one we will kind of slide up in front of our teammate All Kyle right, Larson clear clearing him for the 12th position as we come out of turn two on the back bumper of the four of Kevin Harvick as we head into turn three now looking to his inside and Alex Got Bowen's inside as we come through turn three in on the exit of turn four clearing the nine of Harvick side by side with Bowman across the line to pass him now into turns one we will retake the 10th clear, position man. and we are finally back in the top 10 in this race. Now into turn three, we close in big time on the back of the 41 to Kurt Busch as we exit turn four. You know, almost alongside on his inside and by the time we came to a few laps later we would end up getting a caution after I worked my way up to the fourth position finally now with 10 laps remaining Truex will lead the way alongside the 12 of Blaney and on my inside will be Clint Boyer we've made a big comeback already and let's see if we can make this comeback even larger now as we restart this race the green flag is back out as we come across the line it is just now seven laps to go and immediately I clear the 14 of Boyer so I dive down to the inside, looking to the stay inside low, of the 12 of Blaney, low. but he will clear me on the exit of turn two. And so will Clint Boyer as I had a really tough time getting going on that bottom line as I drop down there in front of the 14 on the exit of turn four. We get really stay sideways low. now alongside Clint Boyer across the line as we head into turns one and two with six laps to go in this race. Looking to the inside of Brian Blaney, clearing the 14 of Clint Boyer as we come out of turn two down the back straightaway heading into turn three. Now looking to the inside of the 12 of Blaney as we exit turn four. He will look like he might clear me, but no, we will come across the line side by side going into turns one and two. We do clear the 12 as we kind of pull a slide job on him on the exit of turn two down the back straightaway. At this point, we only have about four and a half laps to go and you see the gap between myself and the leader of Truex. And it's really interesting how me and Truex ran one, two, early in this race we both struggled real hard within this last stage and now we somehow both find ourselves in the top two positions at the end now as we come through down into turn three eric jones hits p3 behind me as we come through turns three and four martin Truex jr crosses the line to hit three laps to go in this race and i'm doing everything i can right now sending it in sending it into the corner deeper than i have before and we just could not gain any ground on the 78 as he continued to pull away from me now as we come through turns three and four hitting two laps to go in this race sliding on the exit of the corner right, just now. trying to find any speed i can and it's not happening as we come through the center of turns one and two on the exit once again just sliding everywhere as i was really struggling at this point with grip now as we come through turns three and four certainly a lot more grip than last episode as we get exit turn four though martin truex jr takes the white flag truex has a win already this season we don't but obviously not close enough right now to run him down as we exit turn two down the back straightaway for the final time into turn three martin truex jr with one win on the season i believe from las vegas now he looks to make it two as he wins in bristol and we will finish in the second position which is our best finish that we have earned this season so certainly Nothing to hang our heads over as we made a huge comeback after being in the 20th position somewhere around there with just 20 laps to go or so. So certainly we recovered a lot of points we could have lost in this race. We beat Kevin Harvick who is really the car to beat once again this season. So we certainly gained some points on him uh, fortunately and uh, now we got quite a bit of money obviously. I think just about a million million dollars is usually what we get close to anyways and we make a ton of money in merch so yeah we got over a million dollars in this race now as you see the points uh, standings right now Car Harvick still leads and I still sit second in the point so hopefully we can continue to do what we're doing this season we've been doing a good job we've only had one 
finish outside of the top 10 and so is Harvick now as he finished 11th in Bristol so his top 10 streak also comes to an end so uh, that's uh, unfortunate for him uh, AJ Allmendinger he's happy with me and then we got a few drivers that are not very happy with me and understandably so uh, William Byron Daniel Suarez and Clint Boyer certainly not very uh, impressed with my abilities on the track but we still finish better than them so that's good at least but uh, if you guys enjoyed this video make sure to comment like and subscribe those would all be very appreciated and in the next episode so we will have Richmond for the Xfinity Series and the Cup Series. So we'll see if Haley Deegan can maybe get win number two. As you see the point standings, the playoff standings. Truex leads with two wins, 14 playoff points. And there we sit with zero right now. Not looking good for myself uh, playoff points wise. But uh, there's the playoff standings. The last car in is William Byron right now. So I'll see you guys in the next episode. Thank you for watching everyone. And have yourselves a great day. And see you in Richmond.